Hello everybody, welcome back to Ray's World. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping in. I hope you stick around, subscribe, and hang out for quite some time. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. In today's video, we have a couple of microwaves that I was able to get for free. We are going to disassemble them, find out what aluminum, copper we have in there, maybe something else. I know there's some magnets in the magnetron, so we're going to pull those out and take a look and see what we have got. And then we're just going to melt what we can. All right, well, here is one of two microwaves. Here's the other one right here. Um, I've got a bunch of these cords because the ends here are zinc plated brass and I want to figure out how I can get those apart and melt those. So I've got all of these as well ready to go. First thing we need to do before we dive into this is take one of these apart. And the reason for that is because microwaves contain a high voltage capacitor, enough to kill you if you uh, don't discharge it properly. And so what we need to do is we actually need to make a wire so that we can short out this microwave. Let's see what we've got. Yep, those will work. So what I want to do is cut a nice long wire. And I'm going to strip off some of this heavy-duty shielding, but I want to leave a lot of it because it is really good heavy-duty insulator, and I don't want to get electrocuted. Let's strip a bit of this off. Okay, so we're going to use one of these wires. Let's just use the green one, because why not? Alligator clips. And we just need to do the same to the other side. So what I'm doing is I am making a wire in order to short out the high voltage capacitor. We want to short it out so that it will discharge all of its electricity and it will be much safer when we clip it from the high voltage transformer. You'll see all that here in just a second. All right, so we have a heavily insulated wire that we can use to short out a high voltage capacitor. Let's put the rest of these away for now. This is a really cool door and I'm going to end up saving this door. It's a nice clean plate too. The other one had this plate in it, which was really gross. These were both free microwaves, so I was excited to get them both for free. Uh, so I don't really care. Ugh. This one came from a smoker's home, and it really stunk when I got it. Oh. On the side, warning, microwave energy. Oh, really? think I have it's a star with a, a thing in the center makes sense for safety let me see if I've got something that will take that off found some allen wrenches that work yep one on the other side as well cool All right, so let's identify our parts here first. This is the, or the high voltage capacitor. This is the um, high voltage transformer. And this is the magnetron. 
Uh, we've got some other wires, electronic boards. Uh, we do have some copper up here as well, some copper in over here. There's copper in the mag in the uh, transformer. That's what we're after primarily. There's a few aluminum heat sinks in the magnetron, a couple of switches, other boards that, you know, if somebody was a little smarter than me, they could use. But uh, what we're going to do is we are going to take the capacitor out of there. What we need to make sure a capacitor, guys, is something that stores electricity like a battery. But unlike a battery, a capacitor releases its energy all at once. That's why you don't get electrocuted from a battery. Just, you know, like a 9 volt. You know, you touch your tongue to it, it doesn't electrocute you. Because it's not releasing all of its energy all at once. A capacitor, on the other hand will release all of its energy all at once. So if there's any energy stored in this capacitor, it will release it all at once. And there's a lot of energy that these capacitors store. Yeah, 2100 volts. Um, these capacitors store a lot of energy. So that's why we want to short it out before we do anything. And there's no energy in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this short on here, just like that. And it's safe now to clip the wires without getting electrocuted. Okay, so that is rendered safe. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that short on there. No big deal. So now we can really get into this and start taking some of these components apart. I don't get a whole lot at the salvage yard for copper wire that has shielding on it. It's like number three coated copper wire or whatever. Um, price is pretty low, but you get enough of it. I'll just throw it in a bucket. All right, so there's some copper wiring we'll just toss to the side. We're gonna unplug our magnetron here. These are wires that went to the capacitor. All right, so I did a little research too. There's not a whole lot I can use this magnetron for. Um, it is a 2.4 gigahertz magnetron. And apparently if it's not shielded properly, um, it will kill you if you try to use it in some other application. So we're not gonna do that. We will just scavenge it. There's some magnets in there, like I said, some aluminum heat sinks. So the magnets aren't super strong. Maybe I'll just give them to the kids. Well, that's the motor for the fan. All right. So there's the motor for the fan. That would be a useful little motor if I was into that and could build something out of it. So we've got copper here uh, that we're probably going to have to get creative. We might have to just cut it um, and we can probably cut it. Yep, boom, copper wire. Get another bowl to put our copper scrap in. All right, let's uh, continue taking this apart. We're not gonna take it down to its smallest components. We just want to get this magnetron. Oh, there's the light bulb. We just want to get this magnetron and the rest of the copper out of here. Whew, that's heavy. All right, there's the transformer. If I was smart, I could use that for something cool. All right, and there's our magnetron. So 
some of these older magnetrons are beryllium sulfide right here, uh, which is a carcinogen. And so not good to take apart. If it is, if you see one that's pink, that's an indication that it is beryllium sulfide and you should not take it apart. looks like a brass mesh feels cool so we'll save that we'll throw that in with the copper no baby oh this one's pink see it right there that's beryllium sulfide so I'm gonna be really careful not to damage that. Okay. All right, there's one magnet. Cool. It's a nice big magnet. It's not particularly strong. It's not a neodymium magnet, so uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, it's not super duper strong. Maybe. Boom. There we go. Boom. Two nice big magnets. Yeah, we'll need to put this in the vise probably and get the puller to pull this off. Okay, giant transformer. Okay, this we will probably have to go into the shop as well to get the copper out of, because we're gonna have to cut, we're gonna have to get the angle grinder and we're gonna have to cut that. So let's just set that aside. All right, well, that's one. I'm not gonna bore you with all the talk through the second one. We'll just get it taken apart. Oh, I can't. These aren't gonna work. I'm gonna have to go, yep, I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store to get this one apart and get a couple of, uh, special wrenches. Whew, it is much later, much later, but we have what we need. All right. Ludicrous speed, go!
Okay, I think what we need to do now is just go down to the workshop, cut these open, press these off, clean up all of these cords and whatnot, and get them in a bucket or something, and melt all this stuff down. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it into an alloy. Just, uh, let's just melt the aluminum, copper, and this little bit of bronze, uh, brass, excuse me, together, and we'll just pour it all into one bar. How about that? Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this video to bring you this important announcement. We got a letter from Amanda down in Missouri. Awesome, awesome. I used to live in Missouri, actually. I went to school in uh, Springfield and in Rolla, graduated from high school in Missouri, so spent many years in Missouri. Ray's World, new stacker here. Good deal. Recently found your channel. Love it. All caps, exclamation point, times two. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Amanda. Love that you have a variety of family fun. Also like watching your pours. Love poured silver. Since I'm a new stacker, I don't have any yet, but I will eventually. Awesome stickers and bags. I'm trying to make a sticker board, so would love one of your stickers. Thanks, Amanda C. A little bit more of a note, but uh, it's a little more personal, so I'm going to keep that to myself. Thank you so much, Amanda. She sent me a self-addressed stamped, stamped envelope, so I will be sure to get uh, stickers actually got them right here. We'll get a couple of stickers in there for Amanda. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Amanda. I appreciate the mail. Package from Dirt 30 with George. I thought this was pay dirt at first, so I opened it, but it's not. It is definitely not pay dirt. I haven't opened this part, which is amazing because I picked this up from the post office yesterday. What is the heck is this? Okay, we got some coins. Oh, Oh, George. We have some U.S. quarters. They're all Denver Mint. <gasps> They're all 2020. Oh my gosh, it's all five of them. Where's my book? All five Denver National Parks 2020 quarters. I have three of them, but that's okay because I do not have the American Memorial Park from the Northern Mariana Islands which I think is either this one or this one. I don't have my glasses. Okay, what am I missing here? This one says Connecticut. This one says Kansas. Tallgrass Prairie from Kansas. Weir Farm, Connecticut, a national park for art. Connecticut. There we go. Now I got it figured out. Cool. George. My man. Okay, so check this out. This is all of the Denver quarters, 2010 to 2020, complete set. This is all of the 2010 to 2020 National Park quarters, and all I'm missing is the Kansas, Tall Grass Prairie. That's the only one I'm missing to have a complete set from 2010 to 2020, both Philadelphia and Denver. If anybody's got that Philadelphia coin, uh, Kansas, uh, Tallgrass Prairie National Preserve, 2020 from the Philadelphia Mint. If anybody wants to send that to me, I would be most appreciative. That would complete this set from 2020. So George, man, that was huge, brother. Thank you so much. I do have, George, send me a message if you would, please. I have a 2020 Salt River U.S. Virgin Islands from Philadelphia. So if you need that one, George, let me know. Uh, just send me a message. Put a comment down. Let me know, and I will send that one off to you. I had that sitting there for a while. All right, George also sent us a Buffalo Nickel, which is very cool. Very nice Buffalo Nickel. Dude, thank you. There's no mint mark. 1928. Here are my Buffalo Nickels. Let's see what we need. Yeah, I've got a 1928. You know what? It's been nicodated. I've used ferric chloride on it to get a date off of it. Nope, that's the Denver Mint. 1928. So let's pull that one out of there. Yeah, it's a 1928, but you know what? It's from George, so we're going to put it in the collection. So there we go. There's my Buffalo Nickels. I love this board. I wish I had more of these. I wish there were more of these made. These boards are absolutely awesome. It says there's these corn coin boards available in this size, but I just haven't gotten them. Lincoln had since 1909. That would be awesome. Can be framed in 11 by 14 picture frame. George, thank you so much. That is so cool. 
I'll just put that one with the rest. And then he sent us a 90% silver half dollar. Dude, 1964 Kennedy half dollar, which is silver. That is awesome right there, brother. I'm blown away, man, and there's still more. I don't know what this is. This is just some giant chunk of, oh, it's copper. Oh, dude, it's in a sealed bag. I'm not going to open it. Manufactured in the U.S. Brownstone Metal Art Company, 999, 49's fine. Pure copper, two pounds, serial number, number four from 2009. Holy smokes. That is a two pound copper bar. Dude, that is so cool. My goodness, that's so awesome. I love getting mail, guys. If you want to send me something, my P.O. box is in the video description. You can send me something. I definitely will film it and get it on screen for you. Thank you so much, Amanda C. and Dirt 30 with George. Amanda, I will get that right out to you. You know what, Amanda? Here's the, the 28 that I took out of mine. I'm going to put that in there for you. There's a, a, a buffalo nickel for you as well. So thank you guys so much. Let's get back to the show. That appears to be copper-coated aluminum. Whatever, we're still gonna melt it.
All right, we're gonna put a piece of cardboard down underneath crucible so it doesn't stick to the fire brick. Slide her up, eh? Look at that, my glove is melting. Well, here is the bar that we have. It took quite some time to get those microwaves disassembled, uh, get them melted, get them poured into a bar. I, I actually, I don't know if you caught it right there at the end of when I was polishing this with the bench grinder, but it flew out of my hands and flew across the room. So be careful if you're using the bench grinder. Pretty cool little aluminum bar. I like it. It's gonna go on the shelf with the rest of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Dirt 30 with George and Amanda for the mail. Take care, everyone. I will see you very, very soon. Bye.